Now we generally don't wedge a lot of clay anymore because we have a machine called the pug mill which um, mixes our clay, essentially wedges it, and takes the air out. So um, we don't do it as often as we used to. But you may have to do it at home. If you get some dry clay and it gets a little bit too dry and you can't use it, it's not plastic, it's lost that plasticity, you could take a little bit of water and add to the clay and then you can wedge it. And wedge it basically means to knead it like you would kneading dough. It's the same thing. So um, you can just use your hands to mix it up just like the picture right there. Now you may have to do this on some kind of cloth, canvas, or paper. It may stick to a table. So generally what we do is we have a piece of canvas that is tacked down to a table and that's what we wedge it on. Um, you may have to find something at home that you can use to do that if you have to do it at home. So try some things out and see what works for you, but we're just basically mixing water in with the clay, getting the air bubbles out. Paddling, this is something I like to do with my clay to shape it. I will take a paddle and in your packet, or if you're at school here, uh, we have paddles that you can use. In your packet, I gave you a ruler. And you can lightly tap the flat surface of your ruler on the clay to shape it. Okay. If you have something bigger, like a bigger stick, a bigger, wider board, or you see an example here, they have kind of like a spoon that they're tapping it. What they're doing is they're tapping the clay and shaping it. And it's a good way to, to shape your clay. And I'll try to have a video later when we start working on our projects, and I'll show you that. Um, but it works really well, and I use it all the time in certain situations. You may remember this from like grade school or junior high. Anytime you join two pieces, you want to score them. Now, there are some exceptions, but most of the time you want to score two pieces because what you want to do is you want to blend these two pieces so that they become one piece. So you don't want them to be really two separate pieces. Um, and then we're going to use slip to help join those pieces. We'll put slip on those areas that we scored and then we'll press the pieces in really good and try to blend them together. That's what scoring is. Did you know that clay shrinks when it dries? It does and um, in this example right here I'm showing you there there is a um, uh, this is not plaster it looks like plastic or rubber or rubber mold and they press clay in there and then when it dries it shrinks away from that okay and this is really important when um, you make, let's say you make a piece of pottery and it's getting dry, it's getting a leather hard and then something breaks off and then you take a piece of plastic clay and you try to fix it and you, it's, first of all if you try to take plastic clay and attach it to leather hard, especially our bone dry clay it's not going to work, it's eventually going to come off but the, the clay is going to shrink at different rates and it's not going to stay together so it's important to know that when you're making things, make sure they're in the plastic or the kind of more moist leather hard stage. Um, if for some reason you break something, you have to moisten it up to uh, attach a new piece and it may or may not work. So just remember that clay does shrink and if, it, if one piece has already shrank and then you're adding one that hasn't, then that one shrinks and you've attached it, it'll probably come apart. Now there are clay containers, and you can see right here um, the container parts. So on a piece of pottery, you have the top, the very top, the opening is called the lip. The sides are called the walls, and then the bottom, um, some people will call it a base, but we call it a foot. Okay, that's the foot. So a lot of times I'll talk about these different parts, and you really need to know what I'm talking about when we are discussing you know, your work. Casting, I mentioned this before when I talk about slip. You see a picture here, there are plaster molds. What you do is you take these plaster molds and you kind of stick them together. You take some rubber bands or something to hold them together. Then you pour slip into the plaster mold and fill up the whole mold. And then you pour the slip out. And what happens is that slip will attach itself to that plaster. And you do that several times. You can layer it up and make several... Um, pouring it in, pouring it out, and it'll make several layers and it'll make a certain thickness to your pottery. When it dries, remember that clay shrinks and it'll kind of pop free of this mold and then you can open it up and you've got a form. 
So uh, that's what casting is. When we talk about relief, we're talking about a raised design on a slab. Okay, so um, you see two examples here of a flat surface in the back and then built up or carved into is a design that's raised up. You probably have a relief at your house. I'm sure you do. Okay, like for example, a coin is a relief because it's a raised surface on a flat slab. So that would be considered a relief. When we talk about in the round, we're talking about an artwork that we can view from all sides. So when we walk around it, you know, it is meant to be viewed from all sides, not just one side. So these examples of the sculpture here, you can view those from all sides, and that w that's what makes them in the round. Texture is the roughness or smoothness of a surface. Now, the, the texture in these pictures here are actual texture. If you touch them, you can feel that they are rough, and that is their texture. It's a rough texture. Okay. Um, but also, when we talk about texture, it, you could have a smooth texture, like glass is a smooth texture. There's a texture there, but it's super, super slick. That's what a texture is. Okay, it could be rough or it could be smooth. Generally, we talk about rough textures. Also, when we're doing drawing, we can talk about like a visual texture, something that looks rough or something that looks smoother, the texture of it. It's, it if you touch the drawing, it's obviously not a rough texture, but it looks rough. So we can have that actual texture or we could have, have like a visual texture. Sgraffito is a technique that's really kind of cool and I've had several students do this in the past and, and it's really kind of fun to do. It's basically where you have a clay pot or sculpture made in one color clay. Then you paint a liquid slip on top that's a different color, a contrasting color. Then you use a tool to carve away at some of that contrasting color to expose the color below. And that creates a very unique, interesting um, visual technique. And um, I think they look great, you know. Um, so you see these two examples. One of them could have been white clay with black slip, and the other one looks like it was a brownish clay with a light, lighter slip. Now this gets a little bit confusing here. Um, some people will call this burnish. Some people will call it fettle. Usually when we talk about fettle, we talk about using a knife. But, you know, I've always used it with any other, any tool that does smoothing, okay? So when you want to smooth your pottery or your sculptures, beginners always say, I'm going to put some water on there and smooth it. But I told you before, that brings up the grog. It takes away that cream. It washes away that cream of the clay and it brings up the grog, just like concrete is, where it has rocks in the concrete, and when they smooth it, they, they kind of smooth over the cream, and you don't see the rocks. But they're there, strengthening it. Same thing for uh, grog. So if you want to make something smooth, and you want to make it shiny, you need to use a tool. And what you do is you rub this, and it kind of brings up that cream, okay, to the top. And uh, we call it burnish or fettle, depending. Technically, fettle is not exactly the right term, but I use it a lot, and um, it, it works for me. But you can use a little, a lot of different tools. Sometimes you can use a spoon. I've used like a, a ballpoint pen if it's really round and smooth. Um, I've used all kinds of things um, to do this. When we talk about a motif, we talk about one unit of a pattern. So like a polka dot pattern, the one dot is the motif. So a lot of motifs together create a pattern. So if you've got like a little design and you repeat those, that is a pattern. So each of these little gold things here are, are considered the motif. And you put them together, it creates a pattern. When we talk about tempera, it's a type of paint. It's a water-based, water-soluble paint. It's we use it sometimes in 3D because um, if we want to paint something and we want to put like a stain finish on it, we can use this. And I'll, I'll tell you what stain it is in a minute. Um, 
but sometimes we'll use this. Generally not. When I talk about pottery, I talk about not using a water-soluble paint because it will wash off, especially if you make a, a mug and you put tempera on it. First time you put liquid in the mug, it's going to come off and you're going to be drinking it. So you don't want to do that. You want to probably glaze it. But we can talk about that later. So what is stain? When I talk about stain, I'm not talking about like the actual material. I'm talking about the technique. And what we do with stain sometimes is we'll apply a paint like a tempera, or it could be other paints, or it could be glaze or something like that. Apply it, and then what we'll do is take it to the sink and we'll kind of wash off some of it. And we let the paint or the, or the stain or the glaze or whatever reside in the edges, in the cracks, in the pores, and it gives just kind of like an antiquing technique. And um, sometimes we'll do that with our projects. And it, it's a really cool technique. Um, and it, I think it looks really nice. Sometimes we apply wax to our sculptures. So we create a sculpture. I've done this before. We make a, a sculpture sometimes called a free form. And it's kind of a, um, I don't know, just a very organic sculpture. And for a finish, we will put wax on it. So uh, what we use actually is mop and glow. Mop and blow is the wax and we coat wax on there and, and it seals it up and it gives it a nice shine. So sometimes we do that. Some years we've done it, some years we haven't. Um, glaze is a liquid that you paint on and it's a glass-like coating. So what it paints on, it looks like paint somewhat. And then when it's fired, um, the, a substance in there in the glaze melts it and it fuses to whatever it touches. So uh, when we make glaze pots or glaze sculptures we always put like we always have a dry foot meaning there's no glaze on the bottom so when we put it in the kill it won't stick to the kill because that's what would happen with this glaze. It would melt and it would fuse to the bottom of the kill and then we would have a real problem. Generally your pro project is sacrificed. I have to take a hammer and bust it out. Okay so um, Another important thing about glaze is the color that you paint on isn't always the color that you get. Uh, for example, in this uh, example right here, you see that I have a kind of a pink glaze. Well, that's actually clear. Sometimes I will pull like red looking glazes out of the cabinet and I'll be, okay, what color is this? And the students will say red. I'm like, no, it's going to be green. So it's confusing. Always look at the label before you start painting it on there. And a lot of times what we do is like to make little test squares first so we can paint it on there, test it, and see what it looks like when it's fired. Remember I said dry foot? Here's an example of dry foot right here. So what they did was they didn't paint the glaze on this little area or they painted it on there and then wiped it off. And this way when we put it in the kill, it's not going to fuse to the kill floor. Sometimes we'll use something called stilts and I'll get to that a little bit later. But dry foot means no glaze on the bottom. So what is matte and shiny? Shiny means it's like glossy, it reflects light. Okay, if it is matte, it is dull and it has, doesn't have any gloss. So this example right here, they have a design that parts of it is glossy and parts of it is not. Okay, it's a matte finish and it creates a very unique design. I'm sure you guys all know what carving is. It means to take a tool and remove material. And then here's a good example of this. This pot was made obviously and then come back, they came back and carved away on it. So we use all kinds of different tools for that. There's, you know, in addition to knives, there's things called loops what we use or things we can use to scrape. But um, carving means we just remove material. When we talk about porous, we talk about things that have little holes in it, it has pores in it. Okay, the holes may not go through. It may be like this example here where there's little bitty holes. But generally, we consider uh, something that's waterproof. The, the pores are sealed up. They're filled up. Okay, we want to make something waterproof in um, our class. We will usually glaze it because we put glaze on it, seals it up, forms a glass-like coat, and it's waterproof. Okay, but technically, until you're... Um, stuff is glazed. It's not waterproof. Even though the clay looks pretty solid, it is kind of porous and it has little bitty holes in it. Little bitty 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 holes in it. Okay, we are done with the second set of notes.
that is all we got for now. What you're going to do is you're going to complete the assignment 1B. I think it is 1B, but you better check on Google Classroom to make sure that's correct. But use these notes to complete that assignment and only these notes. Okay, next time we will cover our last set of terms and we will be done with the vocabulary. Yay, I know you guys are happy about that. Now remember, this seems overwhelming, a lot of these terms, but as you start using them, you will get the hang of it. You'll understand, you'll be able to speak the, the language of pottery when you're done. So, so don't worry, you will be fine, and we will all work through it, okay? I will see you next time. Have a good day.